this is an extension for lesson 8. The topics for this lesson are going to be Geological Conceptual Model Relation between sediment, thickness, bedrock, and counter lines Groundwater quality risk Tire 2 Pathway Exclusion for DUA and the tools we're going to use on Quantum GIS are Add Layer Add ArcGIS Map Server Layer Add Layer Add WMS Add Vector Layer Properties Style Categorized Classify Map Composition Export as a PDF And the websites we're going to visit for this lesson are going to be Agriculture of Alberta and Arc GIS online. Hello, welcome back. Today we are going to work with WMS and we are going to create a map. Let's go to open the Quantum GIS. I would like to talk about a few things related with uh, WMS. First, we are going to load, load some maps. Let's go here to open our first link. It's going to be this one for RGIS. Copy. Go here. I want Alberta. Okay. We are going to be working with this map, sediment thickness, and also this map, bedrock topography. <coughs> First, let's go to work with this one. Copy the link, go here, layer at layer. That one is from RGIS map server new one paste here copy the name okay connect at let's go to open the other one also Here, copy the link, layer, at layer, at RGIS, map server, new one, paste, copy the name now, copy, go here, paste, ok, connect, and add. We have a couple of maps. Uh, I'm going to add the side we was working. This one. Zoom to the layer. Now we are going to measure the resolution of the raster image. Let's go to measure a uh, pixel what is the dimension of the pixel but first and we are, we have to check uh, what coordinate systems we have as you can see here we are working now in a geographic coordinate systems but we want to work with a projected coordinate systems okay because we we want we are going to measure in meters and we need to use this kind of coordinate systems okay let's go to change that one first apply okay check here if we is good okay now we are working in utm coordinates now we are ready to measure let's go to pick up a pixel you know that one for example let's go to measure from here to here 300 meters from here to here another 300 meters as you can see here 300 meters or 300 meters okay close is this option here 
you can see this button here click <coughs> and you can measure okay that is 300 by 300 okay then you you have to assume in this kind of image the resolution okay you have information every 300 by 300 meters okay that's the the resolution of this image for the other one <coughs> Let's go to look for a pixel. I want just one pixel. <clears throat> I'm going to take the the other one out to work fast. Uh, let me check. Okay, we have one pixel there. This one, the distance is three hundred also. Okay by 300 we have the same resolution in both of them that's very important to know because now you have you have one point of information every 300 by 300 meters square okay let's go to <coughs> see more things okay take this one out and let's go to talk about the sediment thickness okay as you can see the colors and here the legend they tell us what is the the thickness sediments from the surface to the bedrock topography okay let's go to add the contour lines Uh, contour lines, uh, maybe in lesson seven. Contour lines, clean this one, open, okay. We have the contour lines. Let's go to see the labels for the altitude. Labels, show the labels. Elevation here apply um, I would like to change the color for a red one to see better apply and even here 12 apply oh, that's too big 10 apply okay <coughs> now we have the elevation there and um, Let's go to put the other layer. This layer talks also about the elevation. This numbers is for the elevation. Okay, from this one to this one. And as you can see in our image, that's a green one. Let's go to take this one just for a moment. That's a green one and a blue one. Blue one could be something like this one close to the green or oh, this one maybe I believe it's this one because the altitude here as you can see is from 590 to 620 and we have here 630 and if you see here at the other map for this one the thickness sediment thickness as you can see here, we have this brown that's uh, very uh, light one. Could be maybe this one or this one. Okay. Then the sediment thickness here is not too thick. It's 10 meters or even less. You know, at the uh, brown part, that one is so clear. Also could be around from 10 to 20 or to from 20 to 30. Okay. And if you go here and you assume, for example, this green part is six, 620, for example, here for this green, or even for this one, 620 here, 620 plus uh, 1020 from the uh, thickness sediments, okay? 
that one is going to be 640 okay for example if we have here 620 plus for this brown this one for example 20 more is going to be 640 and that's uh, the altitude okay I'm going to make a with paint our representation of these ones just to be more clear okay this is the the bedrock this is the uh, sediment thickness okay this one from here from to here for example 20 meters that's the sediment thickness okay and here we have the bedrock sorry I'm really bad writing with the mouse bedrock here and according to this one the bedrock is the green one as we said could be this one 620 for example then the altitude here is 620 okay then we have 20 meters of uh, sediment thickness this is sediments sediments okay we have 20 meters then <coughs> 20 meters here for this kind of brown 20 meters then 20 meters 620 plus 20 that's 640 640 and 640 is the altitude we have for this line here okay for this one sorry I know maybe it doesn't look like very precise okay but you have to be aware and what kind of a scale we are working right you know every pixel is 300 by 300 okay that one could be not very exactly okay even maybe this corner goes a little bit more here right but that's the information we have and and that's that's really good right because if we don't know anything about the site just with these maps we have a lot of information okay we have we know here the bedrock it's very close to the surface around 20 30 meters right then we have here the the bedrock topography okay bedrock topography around this altitude okay and we wha uh, what kind of things we can do with this kind of information okay first uh, if we want to know something about the domestic uh, use aquifer right uh, we need to know what is the the thickness of the aquifer right and sometimes the the bedrock it used to be a very semantic rock okay and it used to be the uh, the bottom of the aquifer okay now with this kind of information you can have an orientation what could be the thickness of the aquifer okay even we was talking the other day that the this this area okay we have a well here i'm going to load the well uh, no that's a bacterial one sorry that's a bacterial one bros the walls alvera water walls okay open we have a couple of walls here i'm going to change the color to see more clear 
for a red one maybe apply we have this wall and we have the um, the water table for this wall and we know the water table in this well is almost the same as the water in the river right and we know that means both are connected that's pretty normal because they are very close and if you know what is the water table and you know what is the altitude for the bedrock maybe you are going to know what is the thickness of the aquifer right and if you have to calculate what is the hydraulic conductivity you need to know what is the thickness of the aquifer right this is the the first orientation that it's maybe very approximately okay if you want to know uh, more more accurate the information okay you have to go there uh, make a borehole uh, do your test and everything okay just this one is the first step to do anything you know you have all this information without going to the field that's pretty good okay even you know we know what could be the uh, the thickness of the aquifer what could be the thick thickness of the unsaturated zone or bad dose zone you know even for example um, we can assume uh, the bedrock it's a semantic rock okay and that could be the bottom of the aquifer right because uh, the aquifer the aquifers used to be uh, developed in sediments right you can you can have also the aquifer inside the bedrock because could be fractures and water inside the fractures okay that's the reason because you have to to assess that one at the field but to have the first uh, orientation that's that's pretty good okay now we are going to create a map the map is going to be groundwater quality risk for our area I'm going to take this one out remove I'm going to take this one out remove even the contour remove and I'm going to leave these ones okay let's go to check the map first uh, the map is going to be with the link uh, I believe it's this link, the first link. Copy. Paste. Is this one groundwater quality risk for agricultural areas of Alberta? Is this map? As you can see here, you have some values. Okay, one is the highest risk and zero is the minimum risk okay we are going to be working in our area I mean in this area okay and if we check the information we say about this map I'm going to make zoom okay uh, you have some important things uh, This map display an assessment of groundwater quality risk for agricultural areas of Alberta, agricultural activities that may have an impact on groundwater quality include uh, livestock, crops production, and agrochemicals use. These activities, along with the physical characteristics represented by aquifer vulnerability, that's important, and available moisture, were combined to produce this map okay here at the description they are see they are using this one this parameter aquifer vulnerability and this parameter here to create this map okay groundwater quality risk that's really important okay the classes shown on the map were ranked from zero low risk to one high risk okay 
and we are interested in this parameter okay what is aquifer vulnerability okay they make a definition over here i believe uh, the aquifer vulnerability index is this one prepared ta -ta, uh, the the aquifer uh, vulnerability index rank aquifers vulnerability in four classes based on superficial geology and deep to aquifer okay how they calculate that one with these two, par two parameters superficial uh, geology and deep to aquifer okay and um, for the other one for the this parameter available moisture they use uh, this equation they are talking here aquifers in area where a high mean annual precipitation minus potential evapor transpir transpiration is this equation okay value are considered to be more sus uh, susceptible to contaminants through leaching to the groundwater okay precipitation less potential evapotranspiration values were obtained from the national ecological framework for canada eco districts climate files okay aquifer vulnerability classes were uh, combined with uh, precipitation less uh, potential evapotranspiration rankings to create the groundwater physical sensibility factor okay that's very important information and the way they created this this kind of map it was with the, this method i'm going to show you uh, map map algebra okay uh, image okay i'm not going to open any image yes i'm going to tell you from here for example you have one layer and you have other layer and you can plus these layers and you are going to have this result okay now in our case for example if we are talking about the aquifer vulnerability index they use two parameters okay superficial geology and deep to the aquifer okay then for example we can imagine uh, if that one is uh, geology and that one is for example uh, deep to the aquifer okay and saturate zone geology for example they assume uh, what kind of geology we have okay i mean ima imagine for example i'm going to make a new a new one new don't save okay then we have here sorry i don't like this line <laughs> don't save this is the water table okay water table here here is the surface and here you have the sediments okay this is the sediments and here you have the water and that one is the water table this is the surface okay surface water table okay they are using two parameters okay first they are using this distance what is this distance distance and what kind of geology we have here okay to do the index to do the aquifer vulnerability index superficial geology and diff to the aquifer okay then I know it's a little bit hard to explain hopefully you understand me okay and then for example if this layer is the geology and this layer is the deep to the aquifer okay then for every pixel 
you have a value, a different number, okay? For example, if that one is the geology, and in, in this area you have sun, if you want here um, sand or gravel, you are going to have a value here, okay? If you have here clay, the value is going to be different, okay? Because sand or gravel, the permeability, the hydraulic conductivity, you know, the the movement, the water inside the rock is going to be more easy to move through this kind of material, right? If this is clay, the water is going to be hard to move inside the clay, okay? Then you are going to have different values for every pixel, okay? According to the superficial geology, right? Then the next layer is going to be the dip to the aquifer, okay? If you have, if the superficial is to be aligned, it's like this. And here you have the water. It's not the same this distance as this distance, okay? Then, here, for example, the value could be different from this pixel to this pixel because here, you know, it's different from here to here. Then you are going to have different dips, okay? Then you, that's an equation, okay? You have to plus this layer, plus this layer, and the result is going to be this layer. And this layer is going to represent, in this case, the... The aquifer vulnerability index okay and the situation for the for this parameter is going to be more or less the same explanation okay we are going to work at the future at the future uh, we are going to work with a map algebra to create a maps okay but that one is going to be uh, at the future i don't know what lesson is going to be okay after that we are going to load this layer, okay? Uh, that one, we have this layer here. Is this one? this layer okay and uh, we done lot yesterday as we did here let me show you links it was here this link copy what we have here okay if we go here and add ground water Al Alberta. Okay, it was uh, this one. It was a feature. Okay, and we was working yesterday with this uh, layer, and it's a vectorial one. Okay, and we download the information, and we don't have to use this map because we have a vectorial one that is better okay i'm going to load this vectorial map it was this one a vectorial one lesson eight it was this one open and this one is better because that's a vectorial we have all the information inside our computer we can categorize the information select the field we are going to use this field we can use numbers okay i'm going to show you at the attribute table the attribute table will have values like four one two okay and we have very high median i'm going to use this uh, kind of classification 
properties uh, category size select the field you want this one classify and apply okay going to move this one here going to move this one here okay this one and this one has to be the same okay but that one is a vectorial one with lines and this one is with pixels okay I'm going to remove this one because I don't want to use this one remove okay that's the one we want and I'm going to change the colors for high no for very high the video is already too long then I'm going to tell you what layers I'm going to add okay to do this map and I'm going to pass faster okay the layers I am going to use is the the layers we was using in lesson one okay I'm going to use the hydro this one to show the river open I'm going to use also the here the highway the roads and highways that one is going to help us to identify our area and I'm going to add also uh, yesterday I was uh, downloaded the superficial sand and gravel in Alvera that was a RGIS feature okay and that's pretty interesting also because that one is going to indicate the the areas with maximum hydraulic conductivity in our area okay and that's pretty interesting now I'm going to edit all this information in a map I'm going to pass the video faster and finally I'm going to show you the result and I'm going to, to explain a little bit a little uh, a little things about the map okay let's go to do it
Okay, the map is already finished. I'm going to explain a little bit uh, this uh, composition. The big one, this map, is for the groundwater quality risk. And the small one is for the aerial picture. As you can see, this line, it represents this section of the map. I decided to do a general view of the area to see more information, okay? Our area of investigation is designated with a perimeter with this composition inside, you can see here and here. As we indicate here at the investigation area of investigation, then I decided to put also the the sand, the superficial surficial sand and gravel because I believe this information is important. You see the docks here, here, here. It indicates that it's sand or gravel. Also, we have the river here, Saskatchewan River, and the groundwater walls with a uh, uh, white points. And the scale for the maps for both of them are the same. It's a 20k, both of them. Okay. And you have the uh, scale bar here. Okay. And I fill the box with a few information. And now we, we have to export. Well, I export it already. I'm going to show you. Cancel, cancel. It's lesson eight. That's that's the PDF, okay. And as you can see, the resolution of the map is really good. For this map, I put that one is from Google Maps. This one, and for this one is Alberta Agriculture and Forestry. This one. and that's it i would like to mention one thing before to finish the video uh, it's going to be here i'm going to add a layer i don't know if we have the layer uh, groundwater it's not this one Aquifer Vulnerability Index. I'm going to close all these ones. We can keep that one. Okay, this layer is a very interesting one. We was talking about it before. Uh, that layer, it represents uh, what is the hydraulic conductivity at the unsaturated zone and how thick is the sediment, okay? And that's uh, very important because if you if you are thinking to, to eliminate the pathway for domestic use aquifer, that might give you a lot of information. As you can see the red areas that one it represents the groundwater is very close to the uh, surface okay and you have uh, a very not too thick uh, unsaturated zone okay and the materials even could be very permeable you know with a high hydraulic conductivity but at the green areas as you can see on the map the aquifer uh, vulnerability index it's it's no high values and it represents it can represent two different things right first the groundwater it's very deep the aquifer is very deep or the or the materials you have uh, above of the groundwater the permeability is very low could be seal clay something like that right then in most of these cases you maybe can um, eliminate the dual pathway okay but you have to do first your your investigation right to make sure everything it's okay but that is the the first step 
you can check right but we have all the information for the agricultural areas but maybe we can use it okay that's it for today and see you on next lesson